In this last example, we've got Maya is two kilometers offshore on a boat and wishes to reach a coastal village, which is six kilometers down the straight shoreline from a point on the shore nearest to the boat. She can row at two kilometers per hour and run at five kilometers per hour. Where should she land her boat to reach the village in the least amount of time? So she's on a boat. She's on a boat out in the water here. And we've got a straight shoreline. So let's indicate this. Here's our shoreline. And she's interested in getting to some coastal village. So here's our little village down the shoreline. She wants to get from way out here, which is two kilometers off the shore, to this destination point over here. And she wants to do it in the least amount of time. We know how fast she rows, we know how fast she can run. So if she comes and beaches the boat at some point, she can run the rest of the way. If she runs faster than she rows, then it seems like a good idea to get to the beach to start running. But you want to find this sort of balance. Where is the best spot to beach your boat in order to run the rest of the way? So she's going to row, 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 row. At some point, she's going to beach the boat, and then she's going to run the rest of the way. She can beach your boat at any point along here. So that's going to be my variable that's going to control everything else. How far she beaches her boat from her starting point. So actually I should have indicated that. I'm measuring it from that point right there. So she can either ride straight there, perpendicular line straight to the shore and then run, or she could do anything in between, beach the boat at any point between this spot and going straight to the village. So we're going to let x be the distance down the shore line where she beaches her boat, where she puts her boat on the beach and starts running. Let capital T of T be the total time she takes to reach the village. We're interested, therefore, in minimizing this function t. So we've got to find that function t first. What do we know? We know she can row at 2 kilometers per hour. We know she can run at 5 kilometers per hour. The question is, how can we use these two bits of information to write down our function t? So let's just make one comment here. We need to recall something. We're given a speed. We can work out a distance she travels, for which she's traveling that speed along that distance. We need to know how to get time from that. So speed is distance traveled divided by time. So that means that our time is our distance divided by speed. So that's how we're going to get our time function, given the fact that we know distances and speed. So what is our time? Our time is, I need to know how far this distance is before she beaches her boat, and then I need to divide it by the velocity. How far is that distance? Well, there's a right triangle here. So I know that this distance here is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So it's x squared plus 4. So the time she spends rowing is the distance she rows divided by the speed at which she can row. But then she's also got to run. How far does she have to run? Well, she has to run the remaining distance. How far is the remaining distance? Well, it's six kilometers down the shoreline. If she's already gone x kilometers down the shoreline, 
by rowing, then the remaining is 6 minus x. So the remaining is 6 minus x divided by 5. So there's our total time it takes for the trip. And we want to minimize this. Minimize t on the interval from what? Where is x ranging from? Well, what are the extremes? She could head straight to the shoreline, make no horizontal coverage along the shoreline by rowing, just head straight there, so x is 0, and then run the full 6 kilometers. Or she could row all the way to the village. That means row the horizontal distance of 6 kilometers before she beaches the boat. Or she could stop along the beach anywhere in between. So x can range from 0 all the way to 6. That's what we want to do. We want to minimize this function on this interval. Again, this is the pre-calculus setup. Now we've got our function. We want to optimize it. Now we want to jump right to the result. Well, we can just ask Wolfram Alpha. Minimize this function on this interval. And it comes back saying there's where she should stop along the shoreline. 4 over square root of 21 kilometers down the shoreline. And this would be the total time of her trip then. That would be the minimum value. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that right away to indicate that at this point we've done the bulk of the work, the setup of the problem. The rest of it is now mechanical, using our tools of calculus in this case for optimization. Those are the mechanical parts. These have been these tools have been implemented in computer algebra systems, so like Wolfram Alpha gives you instant access to it. Well, let's see how we can get that result by hand now. Let's do those mechanical calculations by hand. So what do we want to do? Well, we need to take its derivative. What's the derivative of this? Well, it's 2x over 2 times the square root of x squared plus 4. So that's the chain rule on the square root function. But there's also this extra half out front from the half that was already there. So let's see where these 2's all come from. This first half came from the 2 on the bottom. The second 2 in the denominator came from the power rule. Differentiating a square root function is like differentiating of the power function, where the power is a half, so a half comes down. The 2 on the top came from the chain rule, differentiating the x squared. So I can cancel a couple of those 2's off. What about the next part? Well, that's just going to be negative 1 fifth, so I'll just write it in here. It's negative 1 fifth. So that's our derivative. Let's clean it up just a little bit. x over 2 root x squared plus 4 minus 1 fifth. We want to set that equal to 0. So what's our critical number? Well, this means we want x over 2 root x squared plus 4 equal to 1 fifth. So we want x is equal to 2 fifths square root of x squared plus 4. Square both sides just to clear the square roots off. So that's 4 over 25 x squared plus 4. So this would be 4 20 fifths x squared. I can bring it to the other side to give me 21 20 fifths x squared is equal to 16 20 fifths. Uh, the 25s can cancel. And we get then that x squared is equal to 16 over 21. Or in other words, x is equal to 4 over root 21. Notice I didn't keep the negative solution because I'm only interested in the x values on the interval from 0 to 6. So there's our critical number. If we look back, we can see that we're on the right track because 4 over root 21 was exactly what we got from Wolfram Alpha. So I'm showing you this just you know, going back and forth between the tool that gave us the answer already versus our hand computations, just so that our goal is to get familiar with these things and be able to do them by hand. But we can certainly, along the process of learning this, double check our answers to make sure we're not making any mistakes. And if we are, then we'll go ahead and learn from our mistakes by investigating where we went wrong. So we got 4 over root 21 is our critical number. Now we go ahead and we compare our value of our function at their endpoints and the critical number. So we work out t of 0, 
we work out t of 4 over root 21, and we work out t of 6. And we see which one is smallest. What's t of 0? So I'm just going to scroll down a bit so we can see the function still. t of 0 is root 4 over 2, so that's 1 plus 6 fifths. Or in other words, it's 11 fifths, or 2.2 .2 hours. So 2.2 .2 hours, if she had straight to the shoreline and then runs the 6 kilometers down the shoreline. What about this one? So this would be the square root of 4 over root 21, all squared, plus 4 over 2, plus 6 minus 4 over root 21, all over 5. And we can do a bit of simplification here, and we get that it's 1 fifth square root of 21 plus 6, and that that is approximately 2.12 hours. So it's smaller than our previous result. So, so far she makes better time by stopping here. And what about the last one, t of 6? Well, this is going to be, again, we'll look up at the function. This means that she's rowing all the way to the village, so we don't care about the running part. We only care about that first term. So that's 36, that's root 40 over 2, root 40 over 2, or 2 root 10 over 2, or root 10, which is approximately 3.16 hours. So it takes longer there. So what's the minimum? The minimum is this one. And so we have Maya should beach her boat four over root twenty one kilometers down the shoreline to minimize her travel time. So to get to the village in the least amount of time, that's where she should beach her boat. Let's have a look at this. So here she is two kilometers out. She wants to get to that village. She's allowed to stop at any place along here. What did we find? Well, let's just run it a few times just to see. So she rows, 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 then she starts to run. And it shows the elapsed time here that it takes her total distance traveled and how long it took her. I can move this out to different spots and we can see that she rows and then runs. Now the interesting part is when we turn on the optimal traveler. So there's the optimal point. That is the distance that we calculated how far she should go before she beaches her boat and then start running. What that means is no matter where I move this other point, as long as it doesn't coincide with the red point, the red traveler is always going to win. So I'll go slightly before. You can see that even though the black traveler hits the beach and starts running, the red traveler still manages to creep out in the lead. And so we found the optimal spot where she should beach her boat and run the remaining way. All right, that's it for the examples in this section. Thanks very much for watching, and we will see you again next time.